Some of my most popular uploads on this channel is literally just me watching movies that no one should ever, ever see. Movies that are known for being disturbing and are only made for the sake of that reason. For example, I watched all of the Lucifer Valentine videos as well as the August Underground films. Of course, some of them are hit or miss. I do like some of them as they are actually good films, but then others you could tell that there's, there's, they're only, they only exist for one reason and that is to shock. I do have a morbid fascination with certain things. Of course, I do have a limit to where, you know, I don't want to necessarily watch anything real. And I just like the whole idea of something that feels extremely real and shows and deals with all of these grotesque, harsh subjects without actually doing them, which is why they are labeled as movies. Anyway, so I've been collecting movies that are specifically known for being disturbing for quite a while, and yes, I know I made a vinyl collection video, CD collection video, and now we are doing a fucked up movie collection video. No, not all of these movies are part of that collection. I have a whole movie collection of all genres, but most of them, yeah, are uh, labeled as extreme horror, and so we're gonna go over those. I figured the people that enjoyed my most popular uploads of me talking about and watching these movies are gonna like actually seeing the movies that I actually own on DVD. So they're all in alphabetical order. There's a lot of unearthed films in here. There's a lot of like more mild or what I would call starter disturbing movies in here if you want to like dip your toes into stuff like that but don't want to go all the way in yet. And then of course I have some really really terrible things. So first we have a movie by Unearthed Films which shows up a lot here because they're known for making some uh, pretty intense stuff. 100 Tears. It's pretty much just a clown movie but honestly I really wasn't a huge fan of it. Unearthed Films are honestly pretty hit or miss for me. Like Terrifier is like a lot more gruesome than this and just a better movie in general. The acting's pretty bad. It's, ki it's kind of a fun movie but honestly I don't recommend it. Next we have Anx. This is my most recent purchase. I have actually not even seen this yet, so I couldn't tell you a single thing about it. I didn't even read the back. I have no idea what it's about. Atroz. Now this movie is pretty wild. This movie's pretty bananas. As it says on the back, the most graphic and goriest film ever made in Mexico. And I could definitely agree with this because it is pretty, pretty out there. It's pretty messed up. And it's been a while since I've seen it, and I might actually want to watch it again. Uh, it is a pretty good movie, but it is really not for the faint of heart at all. Audition. Uh, this is a pretty well-known one. I'm sure a lot of people, even if you're not like horror movie fanatics like I am, uh, would probably know about Audition. Takashi Miike, if that's how you pronounce it, I don't even know. Uh, but he did uh, Visitor Q. Now these movies are some are the movies that got a lot of traction on this channel. I have all the August Undergrounds, so I have the original, and well, you know, I might not even be able to show that. It's probably fine though. I'll just be more careful. I got Mortem, the second one. Uh, this used to be my favorite. Honestly, I think the original is probably my favorite because Mortem. People say it's the like the craziest one, and like it is, but it gets pretty redundant. Then we have Penance. This is the best quality one. Some might even consider this a Christmas movie. And then I have another copy of Penance. These three are the Unearthed Films version. This one is just the original or something. I don't even know. Uh, but this one was because this one was really hard to find. Here we have Begotten. A lot of people love this movie. A lot of people hate this movie. A lot of people don't understand this movie. And one of those people that don't understand this movie is me. I watched it once. I was bored the whole time. Um, I've seen a lot of like people trying to, you know, explain it and it just doesn't do it for me. It's, I got this for 50 bucks on Amazon. So I'm pretty fucking disappointed in that, but, but whatever I have it. And I guess I don't, I don't really regret getting it or anything. Here we have another Unearthed Films movie. And I watched this on one of my other videos before watching all the Lucifer Valentine movies, and that is Black Metal Veins, a movie about drug addicts, and addicts to be specific, and just their downward spi spiral. And it's actually a documentary. So it's like, this is real, except for the death at the end, I can promise you, is staged, which I think is 
kind of messed up having him do that because he was actually a drug addict and to like ask him to fake his death i find that a little weird but lucifer valentine the director is not a good person there's a lot of bad things that came out about him so i don't necessarily support him as a person but his movies are definitely something to talk about another unearthed films brutal uh i really did not care for this one at all this one's really good bully is just a great story it, it's about these a group of people that hate this one person and they all decide to kill him and they're all teenagers as well so like even crazier they did not get away with it caligula um i'm sure if you have ever taken a history class in your life you will probably know uh who caligula is and you know how terrible of a person he was this movie really displays that i got cannibal holocaust which is probably uh the most well-known one this movie was wild back in the day my dad actually told me that he's never seen it or anything but it was like a big thing back in the day because he was in high school around high school times when this came out then we have the not so great cannibal ferox it's just basically cannibal holocaust but amped down i just don't really understand what the point of it is dead girl i thought this was okay it's pretty original at least to my i haven't seen a storyline you know anything like this before maybe i'm wrong though and i do know this is supposed to get an unearthed films release so i'm pretty excited about that probably get it on unearthed films when that comes out another unearthed films dis very slow moving but kind of hypnotizing in a way i don't even know how to i don't even know how to explain to you what it's about you just kind of have to watch it and i feel like most people that would see it probably just wouldn't have the attention span to sit through it erase her head unfortunately this is the only movie by david lynch that i own i recently saw man what was that what was that movie called inland empire i recently saw that david lynch makes some nightmarish movies i mean the these movies that david lynch this man's movies are like imagine your weirdest dreams your top 10 weirdest dreams ever and you put them just all on tape and you just sit down and watch it you're literally watching your own dreams slash nightmares and it's really weird he really captures what it's like to have a fever and be sick and try and go to sleep here we have faces of death this is probably the most real thing i have on in my collection this is the faces of death collection so it has uh four of them it has been confirmed that most of the stuff in here is acted out and staged uh but it's still interesting uh i really only like the first and second one though unearthed films famine this movie is dog shit it tries to be funny and it tries to be like edgy and it's really not uh, i mean the cover and the the thing up here is this 20 students 20 hours 20 horrible ways to die you know that sounds pretty cool to me and that's why i got it on top of it being on Earth films but this was not at all what i expected it was boring it was dumb it, you could tell it was trying to be a comedy and it just doesn't work at all for me then we also have frontiers i do not actually remember a whole lot about this but i remember liking it here we got funny games this one i saw pretty recently and it is pretty it's pretty different there's a lot of fourth wall breaks in this one but i actually think they're done right it's done in a way where it kind of makes you feel like you're there with these two killers that have captured this family and it's really puts you on the edge of your seat it makes you feel not good which is good because that means they're doing their jobs grave of the fireflies people say that this is like oh disturbing and messed up which like it is part of me almost doesn't even want to mention this just because it's more sad and depressing than anything i heard some people say when the wind blows if that's what it's called is like even more sad than this and if so then i don't really want to watch it because this was pretty damn depressing great great movie though you really connect with these characters you this is like i said in the last one uh it feels like you're there and it's very unpleasant but also 
very good. <laughs> Green Inferno. This movie gets a lot of shit from people. I, I honestly respect it quite a lot. Obviously taking inspiration from Cannibal Holocaust, Cannibal Ferox. I thought, I thought this was pretty good. Here we have all of the American guinea pigs. So I got bouquet of guts and gore. Uh, oh, also I will say I do not have the original American guinea pigs. My personal favorite, Blood Shock. Sacrifice, didn't really care for that for it that much and uh, haven't used a screwdriver since. And this was kind of hilariously bad. The Song of Solomon. It's like The Exorcist except bad acting and just bad cinematography. It looked like it was filmed in iMovie, which is what I use to film my YouTube videos. This one was really weird. Gummo. I don't know how I feel about it. A lot of people say it's a masterpiece. I just don't really get it. It's just weird. And it makes me feel kind of dirty. I don't know how it manages to do that, but it makes me feel like I need to take a bath. Gutter Balls. This is another Unearthed Films movie. And it's basically a horror movie about bowling. It's a, well, it's a slasher. It's basically a slasher film about bowling. Happiness looks like a 80s, 90s sitcom on the outside. But when you watch it, it has some of the most darkest, like, subject matters and situations. There are certain subplots that are like, whoa. Here we have Hate Crime. This one, I don't know. It, when I watched it, it really did just, it's not the worst thing I've seen, but it really did honestly just rub me in the wrong way. Uh, to me... Now, I don't know about most people with this. I haven't seen a lot of reviews, but to me, this felt real. Here we have High Tension. This was really confusing, and I didn't get it the first time I watched it, but then I saw some, like, video, like, on YouTube explanations on what it really means. I respect this movie a whole lot more after I found out the actual symbolism. All right, now, here are some movies that I think are good for, like, starting out like this these are like not that bad compared to some stuff that you can actually find uh, you probably heard of all three of these maybe we have the hills have eyes except i do not have the original i only have the remake but i actually do like the remake better hostel one two and three uh basically an amped up version of saw and house of a thousand corpses house that jack built I would arguably say that this film is a masterpiece, even though it has Fred's mom in it. Okay, but really, I know it's I know she's a famous actress and everything, but for some reason, every time I see this woman, I immediately just think of Fred's mom. If you know, you know. If you don't know, you don't know. Here I have Human Centipede 1, 2, and 3. If I had to rank from most to least disturbing, most is 2. Second most is three, and least is one. But if I had to rank it on, like, my personal favorite, favorite is three, second favorite's two, least favorite's one. I actually like these movies. A lot of people, it's kind of hit or miss for them, but let's face it, one is a genuine good body horror film. Now, two is something that I would show my friends or family members simply just to gross them out because I find that hilarious. And three is just a downright comedy. Human Centipede 3 is so funny. I, 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 don't, I don't know if I'm the only one who thinks that, but maybe I'm, there's just something wrong with me. But three is fucking hilarious to me. People might get mad at me for this. I have Ichi the Killer, but I have not seen it yet. Irreversible is definitely something that will get you sick to your stomach, especially during this one specific scene. And this movie is interesting because it uses a certain soundtrack, like noise that is meant to make humans feel uneasy. And it kind of sounds like this. Yeah, here we got the I Spit on Your Grave. I have the original, which I cannot show. I'm using this to block it off. I can't, I don't think I can show underneath this. And um, pretty good movie. The Revenge is actually really satisfying. But 
I can tell you, I also have the three remakes. I spit on your grave one, two, and three. And honestly, in my opinion, I most people will disagree with me, but I do think these are better. At least one and three. Two, we didn't really care for. Whoopsie daisy. Here you have kids. This is honestly just something that I feel like you could just show in like a sex ed class. High high school sex ed class. Now, like don't don't bring this into the middle schoolers or the elementary schools, but like, you know, high schoolers, this could be I, I could see this being shown, honestly. Last house on the left, absolute classic, absolute masterpiece. Another by Unearthed Films, we have Madness of Many. This was just kind of um Kind of reminded me of Lucifer Valentine's work. I didn't hate it, but I didn't really see anything too special in it. It was just gross. So, you know, one of those movies where it's just gross for the sake of it being gross. I feel like it felt like it was a lot deeper than it actually was. I think it was trying to be deep, but it really wasn't. I had high hopes for May Chan's Daily Life, but I really did not like it. I watched it with Kanban, who's been on several of my videos in the past, and neither one of us really cared for it. Didn't really think it was disturbing, nor good for that matter. Martyrs is one of my favorite horror movies of all time. It is haunting. The ending is haunting. So I'm just not even going to talk about this movie. If you haven't seen Martyrs and you want to get your toes dipped into extreme horror uh, or extreme cinema in general, definitely watch Martyrs. It is pretty... It's more mentally disturbing. Like, for me... It gave me an existential crisis. A very mild one, but it, it definitely was getting there. Mechanics, I can appreciate the work that was put into it, but it really just wasn't for me. I don't have the attention span to actually uh, enjoy this. As a matter of fact, I think I stopped it when there was still like 20 minutes left because I just wasn't into it. Megan is Missing was a pretty big deal on TikTok like a couple of years ago. And that's actually what made me watch it because I was curious as to what was in it. Me at the time, being a little bit younger uh, and not as well into the extreme horror, uh, this, it really did rub me the wrong way the first time I seen it. Now looking back, acting's bad, cinematography's bad. They filmed it in literally like, I think it was like one or two weeks. But it does spread a good message about, you know, talking to people and meeting up with people online. So I guess I got to give it that. And I really don't hate this movie, but you know, it traumatized me once when I was younger. I've seen it like two other times since then. And it's, it's really not a big deal. It's just kind of there and it's, I don't hate it, but I don't love it either. This one is more of a heavy hitter because a lot of people have heard of this one. A lot of people from the underground know what this is, but this is definitely not mainstream. Melancholy der Engel, if that's how you pronounce it, uh, or translated in English to The Angel's Melancholy. I'm opening it because it does have like a little thing on the inside, actually pretty cool. Uh, but people have said that this is the worst, most disturbing movie ever made. Worse than a Serbian film, you know, worse than August Underground. Um, no, it wasn't. I don't, I mean, the animal cruelty is not the greatest. But if you really look past that stuff, it's really, I, I felt way less disturbed watching this than I did with like a Serbian film. Here we have Mother, watched it with my parents one time. We all liked it, but none of us understood the ending. Murder Set Pieces, Fred Vogel did have a cameo in this and he's the guy who made the, who directed the August Underground movies. And honestly, that was the only part of the movie that I liked because I really like Fred Vogel, but movie's not very good. Not in my opinion. Here we have Necromantic 1 and 2. I personally like the second one quite a bit. First one, not really. I think it's kind of boring. But I have them uh, because they really are kind of a, uh, a must-have with this type of thing. Unearthed Films, No Reason. Didn't like it. Philosophy of a Knife, Too Long and Kind of Boring. Literally four and a half hours long. It was put on two discs way too long and just boring not good the only john waters movie i have pink flamingos this movie is just really really it's you know i can't describe it you gotta watch it but it's definitely don't bring your children to this one it's 
pretty uncomfortable to watch, but you know, it's also hilarious. It's just a raunchy comedy. Who Keeps He Tapes is uh, probably, I would say August Underground, except nowhere near as bad, but definitely uh, worse in terms of being disturbing and messed up than Megan is Missing. Uh, I also do think this is better than Megan is Missing. And yes, it's a Blu-ray and I only collect DVDs, but it's a DVD and Blu-ray combo pack. Red Crocodile, I liked. It's just about a guy who's addicted to a drug called Red Crocodile. Regurgitated Sacrifice, which is the only movie by Lucifer Valentine that I own. I don't have Slaughter Vomit Dolls, uh, Slow Torture Puke Chamber. Um, I do have Black Metal Veins, I guess, but this is the only thing out of the Vomit Gore trilogy that I have. Not to say that I support this man in any way. I got this movie before I, you know, knew more about him and what he's done. But there's an aspect of his films that I gotta respect. As in, it really is something to think about and something to see. And definitely something to build up your tolerance with a lot of things. Because this was, this was a mess to sit through. As a matter of fact, I saw uh, all three... Uh, movies out of the trilogy in a YouTube video that I made about a year ago so that I might just put a link in the description. It's currently my most popular video so give it a watch if you haven't already. Requiem for a Dream. I watched this with my dad. You know it's weird how many of these I've actually watched with my dad. Here we have Salo. Uh, this is a film and a half. This is a film and a half for sure. This is probably on my top three most disgusted that I've ever felt in a movie. It really is. It was not, it was not a fun one. Here we got Saw. Gotta have Saw. Scrapbook. This one I was pretty pleased with. This one was pretty messed up. I did show one of my friends and yeah, we both kind of endured it together and were grossed out together and it was a great time, but it, this one's pretty out there. Okay, now, it had to come eventually. Everyone knows the Serbian film. We're at S, so obviously, Serbian film has got to be on there. I'm not even going to talk about it because, you know, everyone already knows this one. I don't care who you are. If you have made it this far in this video, you know what a Serbian film is. Here we have Snuff 102. Not as bad as I thought it was going to be. I've only seen it once, and I don't really care to see it again. I didn't hate it, but I wasn't overwhelmed you know, buy it. It wasn't, it just wasn't that great, I guess. Sweet Movie is pretty much ironically titled that because it's not very sweet, but it is very movie. Terrifier 1 and 2. Oh, hey, look at that. I'm a pretty big Terrifier fan. I love Art the Clown. I'm really excited for Terrifier 3. Um, if that's even an officially going to come out, I don't even know. I hope so. I love these movies. These are probably my favorite slasher movies of all time. Here I have Tetsuo the Iron Man. I This is one and two in here, I believe, but I've only seen the first one and I didn't like it. So I just didn't really care to see uh, the second one. And I actually think there's like six of them now, but I don't, I don't have an interest in them. Texas Chainsaw Massacre is another kind of one where it's more of an entry film. You know, everyone's at least... Everyone's seen it. If not, they've heard of it. You know, it's it's an entry one, but still got to add it. Torment is another clown movie that really rubbed me in the wrong way. Uh, based off of the John Wayne Gacy murders, I believe that's what it's based off of. Not a whole lot into true crime. Uh, like I said, not really into the whole real stuff, but I do believe that's what this is based off of. And it's pretty out there. Uh, this is in the too extreme for mainstream column. Tusk. I love Tusk. Think human centipede, except you're a walrus. Honestly, I don't know what's worse, if I was a human walrus or a human centipede. Some might say centipede would be worse, but imagine actually turning into a walrus and losing your ability to speak. And uh, no, it's just both outcomes are honestly terrible. I think I'd just rather die. But you know what's funny is that the guy who plays Wallace, Justin Long, right there, actually voiced Alvin in all four of the Alvin and the Chipmunks live action movies. And yes, I do like Alvin and the Chipmunks greatly. I love them. Now whenever I see Justin Long turn into a walrus when I'm watching that movie, I think to myself, Alvin! Visceral. There's a lot of ropes in this movie. 
Visitor Q can't show the cover of this movie. And finally, I definitely cannot show the cover of this movie. This is Women's Flesh, My Red Guts. Uh, I do not have Tumbling Doll of Flesh. But I've seen this and I don't like it. It's not even good. It's just slow moving and boring. And that's everything. I've literally been recording for an hour and I didn't think it would take that long at all. So as you can see, uh, most of these are kind of like hit or miss for me. It's really rare where I actually find a movie that's known to be disturbing and watch it and then it turns out to actually be a good movie. I mainly collect them because I do enjoy the feeling of feeling uncomfortable, basically testing your mind to the limits of what you can uh, endure. It's like, ever since I was little, I would watch, my mom would let me watch Poltergeist when I was four years old, and that's kind of what got me into horror. And then uh, later on, as I got older, I wanted to push the boundaries a little bit, because I've just always been interested in the horror genre, and seeing how far you can actually take things while it just being literally a movie that is scripted and recorded. So that's my collection of the absolute worst movies that I've ever seen. I, of course, not all of them I feel that way, but there are definitely movies in here that are pretty extreme. Just thought this would be a cool video to make considering my most popular or some of my most popular uploads that are actually about me watching some of these for the first time. So that's just what I actually own. You know, I like a lot of them and some of them I just don't think are very good, but that's the collection. That's gonna be pretty much it. See ya.